Hi everyone, Pam Gregory, Astrologer. I'm going to be speaking to you today about the first half of um, July and the full supermoon that we have coming up, which is very powerful on the 13th. But I'm also in this video, um, it's, I've got a lot to say in this video, also going to be talking about a very important aspect that's happening at the end of July. We're going to start to feel it at least by mid-July, maybe earlier. It's building already now and it's one of the major peaks of the year. So that's why I wanted to share it in this video. So lots to say. Um, we start the month continuing a very strong aspect between Mars and Eris. They've come together in conjunction. That became exact actually on the 27th of June. But what Mars is doing here is not only coming to be conjunct with Eris, but squaring Pluto in Capricorn. And in fact, the the square between Eris and Pluto has been going on for the last two and a half years. I've talked about it in great detail. So essentially the Aries energy, Mars and Eris, are about the individual, about really um, Eris is the feisty street fighter who will take to the streets to, to defend the rights of the individual and sovereignty, but in this clash with top-down government, Pluto in Capricorn, Capricorn very much representing government, government control, etc. So this has been ongoing, but Mars is adding an extra kick to this. So this is about power battles, might makes right, that kind of issue. This may be playing out in your personal life, or it may be playing out in the world stage with big assertions of power, state versus individual. Personally, if you have any planets or angles between 25 and 28 degrees, of the cardinal signs, those are Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, you're going to be feeling intensity in some area of your life. So that's the beginning of the month, which is very strong. We've got a lot of very powerful yang dynamic energy, really, from this point on for the rest of the year, but, but July is very strong. Then on the 12th of July, transiting Pluto comes to conjunct US, so-called natal Pluto, that natal Pluto of 1776 at the Declaration of Independence when the current US really was formed. And this is the second of um, second exact conjunction of three happening this year in that US chart. One was in February, one is 12th of July, the next one is December. And although the ramifications of this US Pluto re return are going to rumble on for years, this is the year of being being in the crucible, if you like. It's about a major redefinition of what and who the US is. I've talked about it a great deal. I have a separate video on the US Pluto return. But it's it's because 1776 Pluto is in the second house of the country's economy. For sure, this is going to affect the economy, um, banking, income for the country, etc., the financial wealth of the country and status. Because it's in Capricorn, it's also about politics and constitution, um, those matters. It's also the second house to do with values. What does the US value going forward? How are you going to kind of redefine yourself in this huge spiritual revolu revolution, really, which is what's happening right now? So this is going to affect the US economically, politically, constitutionally, possibly even geographically. I, I heard rumblings that the Texas is talking about possibly seceding from the union. I don't know whether that's legally or constitutionally possible, but that's the kind of thing that's going to be coming up at this time. So this is very important. Again, it's about intensity. And again, it's about power issues. So that's on the 12th. The next day, <laughs> this just keeps on coming. The next day um, on the 13th, we have a um, full supermoon. This is the closest supermoon of the year, meaning that the, the moon in its orbit is literally at its closest point to us um, for the entire year. So this is happening on the 13th of the month. It's happening at 11.37 a.m. Pacific and 7.37 p.m. UK time. And it's happening at 21 degrees and 21 minutes of Capricorn. So let me share the chart with you. So as always, I've set this for England. This is where I live. So ignore the clock face and the houses of the chart. We're just looking at where the planets fall and their aspects to each other. So this is our full moon. Um, the moon is here. 
conjunct Pluto and opposing the sun, which it always does at a full moon. Now, this full moon at 2121 of Capricorn is within less than half a degree. It's actually within 26 minutes of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction at 2245 of Capricorn that happened on the 12th of January 2020 that kicked off the pandemic and the lockdowns and the extreme rules and regulations that we'd never lived through before that ensued from that. And that symbolism Saturn Pluto was very much about um, tight governmental control. So it's very interesting that this, this very big, and by the way, it will look a lot bigger and, bigger and brighter, this moon, it's gonna be beautiful, is so much closer to the earth. It is shining a very bright light on that original degree and it's still conjunct Pluto here, Pluto and Capricorn, governmental power and control. So this is very interesting. So remember that astrology is only half the picture. We are the co-creators contributing to, to making this manifest. So how is this gonna play out? Is this going to be a repeated um, attempt at that kind of thing that we had in 2020 and ongoing? Or is it that we're gonna be shining a light on how that has worked for us individually, collectively over the last two and a half years? Or is it gonna signal an end to that particular episode and moving on in our lives? Because Pluto conjunct the moon brings up very intense extreme emotions, hard aspects between them. And of course, you always have hard, uh, you always have extreme emotions, feelings coming to your head, out of full moon, particularly a full supermoon, like this one. So yes, this can be, if you like, the power over the people, but it can also be the power of the people, the power Pluto of the people. And it's gonna be interesting to see how that works out because we are already at this point feeling this very strong, rebellious, revolutionary energy that's coming in exactly at the end of the month that I'm gonna be talking about. Now, because this full moon is so close to the earth, inevitably, I think we will see more seismic activity because the moon is exerting a stronger gravitational pull on the tectonic plates. By astrocartography, where this uh, full moon becomes more powerful, angular, more powerful, in many geographies, actually, it's in, Africa, India, China, Russia, um, Eastern Mexico, through the central band of Canada and the US. So some of those geographies may come into the news either because of extreme earth events, extreme weather or earthquakes, volcanoes, or there may be some kind of political and financial um, earthquakes at that time, I think it's very likely. But also the idea of, of um, Earth events is reinforced by the fact that the dwarf planet Sedna, that I've talked about at the past, is at 29, 49, 29 degrees 49 minutes of Taurus, which is the anoretic degree, the very last degree of Taurus. Taurus is fixed Earth. So when a planet is at the anoretic degree, it can express in a more extreme or a more difficult way. For, for. So that's why I think this is very likely to witness some extreme earth events at, the, at that time. But also, of course, it's very much affecting our psyches as well about issues of power. Now, just to stay with some other aspects here, a very positive aspect is this trine between the moon, the people, and Uranus. Uranus is um, about freedom. It's also about new ideas, innovation, developing new systems, which um, are for our future, it could be about freedom, living in a freer way in community, Uranus. It can also be um, about the way we grow food. We can see a lot of innovations with, with food production. And I think that's, that's very likely. Also, Taurus is the human body as well as the earth. So with Uranus there, we are starting to see already, I've become aware of two or three recently, new healing technologies for the body, new healing technologies that work with the electrical system of the body, Uranus, and work with the meridians to help our healing. And they are gonna be absolutely transformative, I think. They're gonna be so powerful for our healing. So that's very positive. 
We also have a square, quite a tight square between Neptune, 25 of Pisces and Venus, almost 25 of Gemini. This is lovely if you are creative, artistic, if you're a writer even, because Gemini is words. So this can be a very powerful time um, for creativity, aesthetics, that kind of thing. It can also be a time where you produce beautiful words, Venus and Gemini, beautiful words that have a spiritual um, context to them, Neptune. Sometimes it can manifest a little bit as disinformation, slippery words, Neptune, slippery words. So be aware of that. But generally, this is going to be beautiful for our, for our creativity. So really use it for that. Neptune is also, um, the uh, this isn't in the chart actually, but Neptune 25 of Pisces is in trine, trine aspect, very positive, to the Sun and Ceres, exact by degree to Ceres. Ceres is um, the goddess of harvests and grains. And um, this, is, this is really lovely because it's also in the sign of cancer, which is about nurturing. Now that can be a motherly emotional nurturing or it can be a, a feeding nurturing, if you like, food nurturing. And so this, I think, this is fascinating because this can be about a real impetus to have more spiritual meaning in our food. And if you remember the work of Mazuru Emoto, he asked people to send emotions to water and then he froze the water and produced crystals. You're probably well aware of his work that where the emotions were negative, the crystals were very ugly and asymmetrical and distorted, emotions like anger or hate. And he, where he asked people to send love, for instance, to the water, they produced beautiful, symmetrical, exquisite crystals crystal shapes and of course most of our body is water but this works with everything actually um, of course not just water but also the earth I mean, there's some amazing spiritual communities such as a very well-known one in Scotland called Fintorn where I visited and apparently when the, the founders arrived there and they wanted to grow a lot of organic food the, the soil was very very poor so they sent love to the soil, they sent love to the earth and they now produce vegetables the size of footballs. And I've witnessed that with my own eyes. So we are affecting everything. We're affecting each other, we're affecting the water, we're, we're affecting the soil, we're affecting our food. So bless your food with love, bless your food, but also when you're planting food, bless your seeds with love, bless the, the, the soil with love. And I think that's what this beautiful trine is about. There's also quite a, a challenging aspect to Ceres here. This is Eris, back to Eris here, 25 of Aries, is in a square aspect. It's Aries, Cancer, square aspect to Ceres. And we know that Eris is, is a street fighter in, in shorthand. So is this suggesting we know that because of the war that grains are in short supply because of the major grain suppliers have been compromised very obviously. So that may produce some grain shortages in some parts of the world, some food shortages. For instance, in Sri Lanka, there have been a lot of food protests, food riots. And interestingly, if we go back again to that Saturn-Pluto conjunction in January 2020, Ceres was actually sandwiched in between Saturn and Pluto at that conjunction, which is why I was suggesting at that time from two and, a half year, two and a half years ago, that it's a very good idea to have favorite long dated food in your house that you love to eat. I don't think the um, food riots certainly will not be all over the world. They won't be massively extended, but they, they will be short term disruptions. I think Uranus in Taurus also says that. Uranus in Taurus is, um, is there till 2026. So have some favorite food that you'd eat anyway, you love to eat in your store cupboard, and then there's no panic. You, know, you don't need to worry. You've got some, you've got some backup. So um, that is another aspect of this full moon. And um, just to briefly touch on Homer here, if you sometimes talk about, sometimes don't. Remember, she's the goddess um, of fertility, linked to the goddess of fertility in Hawaii. Um, incredible regenerative creative energy. And as this clash, this long-term clash between 
Eris and Pluto continues with the demolition of the old order, she at the other end of the seesaw is producing magnificence um, with food and regenerating the land. So don't forget that this, this isn't just demolition, this is creation. Um, Homer is at the other end of the seesaw and she is an exquisite symbol for new earth as well, as is Uranus and Taurus, actually Uranus, new Taurus earth. And um, this is where we're headed. Um, so what I want to talk about now is that Mars at 13, the 13th of July is starting to track towards Uranus and the North Node. And it gets there exactly by the 31st of July. So by 31st of July and the 1st of August, this triple conjunction, this very rare triple conjunction will be exact. It'll be exact at 18, but by degree, by the way, 18 degrees of Taurus. Now that's very interesting because the final Saturn Uranus square by degree is coming up at 18 degrees of Aquarius Taurus in October. So this triple conjunction in July is gonna give us a glimpse of what is gonna unfold in October, which is gonna be a massive month, I believe. So a rare triple conjunction, what is this gonna be about? Well, it's very um, eruptive energy, it's rebellious, it's revolutionary energy. Um, the, the big issue, in fact, I'll stop sharing screen here. One of the big issues is around freedom because Uranus par excellence is the planet of freedom, which Mars is energizing. And whenever you get a hard aspect between Mars and Uranus, there's this surge, for, I've got to have freedom. You know, I've got to be my own person. And so that is a very um, big part of this. And there's a feeling of speed, both Mars and Uranus are speedy, urgency, etc. See where 18 of Taurus falls in your chart, because that area of life is going to be very activated for you through July until about mid-August. Um, Mars moves out of Taurus, I think, on the 20th of August. Um, so Uranus stays there long term till the end of 2026, pretty much. But this is going to be a highly activated area of life for you. So see what that means for you personally. Not only will the full supermoon prompt some unstable geomagnetics, but so will this triple conjunction. Because um, Uranus is the unstable, it, it comes in quanta. It doesn't have steady, progressive, gradual energy. Quite the contrary, it's in bursts, it's in thunderbolts, it's in bolts of lightning type. Um, energy. It's very erratic. So we know already that the geomagnetics of the Earth are increasingly unstable. We've, we can all see that in the Schumann resonance, the exponentially high level of um, coronal mass ejections, M-class, X-class flares, which we're seeing on a very regular basis. The Earth, as we know, is also passing through the photon belt, which it, hasn't, which it only does around every 12,000 years, give or take 500. So we have a massive, massive waves of new photonic light and energy coming into us, as well as the new energy that very often is coming from far galaxies. This is new information coming in, whether we're aware of it or not, it's new information coming into every cell of our body to take us to the new human. And I mean that in the most natural organic sense possible. This is reactivating strands of our DNA. We are rapidly upgrading to become the new human with all kinds of extra psychic sensitivity skills, et cetera, that I've talked about in the past. So although the geomagnetics are unstable and that can feel quite rocky, the upside is it's new information that is upgrading us at ricocheting speed, I have to say. For many people, their security will be rattled because Taurus is fixed Earth. They're odd bedfellows, Uranus and Taurus. Uranus wants speedy change, bring in the new, and, you're, and, and, and Taurus said, mm -mm, you know, I want to stay rock steady, don't rock the boat, no surprises, no shocks, want to keep things as they are, permanent, stable, long term, home for life, etc. So that is going to be, this is one of the major peaks of the year where security may be rattled for some people, particularly if you're very fixed around attachments in general, this may be a slightly challenging period because we will be increasingly asked what, what defines security for you. Is it 
the material? Is it the attachments or is it an inner sense of security that we're developing? And are we developing a sense of security within our new communities that are growing at topsy rate as well? Because that's Uranus too. So be aware of, of that as well. We, um, we are going to see some, because what may rattle that sense of security for many people is we are going to see some, may, I believe, major truths, major revelations, major disclosures coming out at this time that are going to be shocking and surprising, but they are going to produce awakening for many people. Uranus is the planet of awakening. It's the planet of the future. So wherever it is moving through your chart, it is, it is shaking up what is routine, stale and deadening for you. But this is a peak, peak, it's one of the major peaks of the year. If you go back to the video I made way back in January about themes for 2022, I was talking about this triple conjunction that's, that's happening in July and early August. So it isn't just for those two days. Remember, astrology is a process, not a pinpoint. We're going to feel it either side of, um, of, of those days by a good really through July and the whole of August, I believe, because it will just have such effects. You may feel wired. It's buzzed up, jazzy energy. It may be harder to, to sleep. And as we move more into this Uranian Aquarian energy, Uranus rules Aquarius, as, as many of you know. And this is also to do with the shift of, I don't want to get too technical here, but the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, which repeated for um, about 200 years in Earth signs, we've moved from a zeitgeist, a social political zeitgeist of materialism and density into uh, rapidly moving towards community sharing information. And so I'd really like you to ask yourself, what is your contribution currently to society, to the Earth? What is your contribution? And do you see yourself principally as service to self still, which many of us were? We were defined by our title, our income, how, we, how fast we've progressed up the corporate ladder. Many of us, myself included. So ask yourself, are you still service to self or have you already shifted into service to others as your principal focus? Because if you've shifted into service to others, that will entirely change your value system and your worldview going forward. So that very simple question that I think everyone should ask themselves defines your value system and your worldview. Critical question for now. We are going to be going through very dramatic times this month and ongoing. I think the rest of this year is going to be, again, whitewater rafting. So stay in peace. It's going to be very lively on the outside. Stay in peace. Find simple, simple practices like closing your eyes, dropping into your breath. You can either do imagining that you're breathing in and out of the heart or do the, the baby belly breath where you just let the breath breathe you. And as you drop into that breath with total focus, you slow and deepen the breath. You reduce cortisol, that stress hormone in your blood in moments, really. And you just drop into peace. You drop into the present moment which is where your power lies. If you're in the past, in the future, you, you can't find it. Your power lies in being in the present and you can also drop into bliss with this free, simple breathing technique that every single person on earth can do. Also know whatever is happening in the outside world, and it certainly doesn't look like it, you'd be quite surprised when I say this, but know that we are entering the love revolution. Just know that, know that we are entering a heart-based world. And if it doesn't look like that on the outside, all the more reason to focus on it. And focus on it with laser beam attention. And imagine that you're locking onto a docking station. You're locking onto that docking station of the love revolution. And do not be deterred. That is your focus going forwards. And I think all of us in our lives have lived from the outside in rather than the inside out. You know, we, we've listened to news or read stuff on social media, alternative, whatever it is, and we, we react to it. We are kind of buffeted by it. And we have to move into a, a much stronger, more conscious age of mastery. I wrote about this actually in certainly my second book, if not my first, that we must live from the inside out because that's what the astrology teaches us 
your birth chart is all about your inside, your psyche. So we have to choose a state of being. Let's call that love. Let's choose a state of being that you want to live in love all of the time, to beam out love to the world. And it particularly helps challenging relationships. So choose love and dominate your reality with love. Dominate it. Do not get knocked about, buffeted by whatever other information is coming in at you. You're the master, you are the co-creator. Because if we're buffeted by the news, we're in victim mode, we're giving away our part of the events of those people who are affecting us. Dominate your frequency with a very positive emotion. And I'd suggest love is a pretty good one to focus on. Just one other thing I want to share with you, and I want to really credit um, the wonderful Vedic astrologer, Joni Petrie, for discovering this. So thank you, Joni. Um, as astrologers, what we tend to do is go back to the last time an important aspect happened and said, okay, so this is what economists do, this is what meteorologists do. So we go back to, okay, what happened last time? And we look at the, those events and say, okay, given current circumstances in the present, how is that likely to manifest? And it may not manifest in the same exact way, but it certainly informs where or, or what we might see unfolding in our world. So this conjunction, it's a triple conjunction, Mars, Uranus, North Node. North Node is our collective future destiny, where we're headed. But let's just focus on the Uranus, North Node conjunction. This happens every 75 years, but not in Taurus, which is where it's happening now. So it last happened in Taurus in 1855. And it happened then actually very close to the 18 degrees um, that we're going to be having now. It happened at 14 degrees. And this was the year, this happened in March 1855, and I'm going to put a link to an article below this video so you can go and read it for yourself because it's, it's just too much to explain. But it was called the contested election of, Can of Kansas, contested election of Kansas. And apparently what happened was there was a lot of fraudulent voting in Kansas in March 1855 because a lot of the residents of Missouri came over the border and actually voted in that Kansas election, which wasn't supposed to happen. And this was particularly critical because Kansas wanted to um, enter the, the US Union, but would it enter as a free state or um, a slave state? I mean, just horrific to think of slavery, but that was the issue at the, at the time. And the residents of Can Kansas, as I understand it, were anti-slavery, but the vote, because of the influx of residents from Missouri, went towards a, um, a pro-slavery vote. And in fact, there were more votes counted than there were residents in, in Kansas. So anyway, a lot of violence ensued because this, this election was, was such a mess, really. But it also fed into, of course, um, the main, main theme of the American Civil War. So I just share this with you because well done, Joni. I mean, that was an extraordinarily interesting thing to find. And please note, I'm expressing zero political opinion here. I'm not interested in politics. I don't support any political candidate anywhere in the world at all. I'm not interested in that subject. I'm interested in, in love, freedom, and frequency. But the reason I'm sharing it with you is because very often there's some kind of re reverberation that appears in our world. So let's see what unfolds at this time. So a lot in this video, some of you may have to watch this several times, so I moved quickly through it. If you don't know where these aspects fall in your chart, and it's so helpful if you, if you know where they fall, the full supermoon, the triple conjunction, etc., you can download a free birth chart from my website. If you go to the link in the description below, you can buy a two-part video series that you can use forever for every update I do to understand each update I do in much more depth, and that will help you understand the, the meaning of each update in, in your own life, your own astrology in your own life. If you want to check out my books, my teaching videos, long newsletter, just um, go to my website, pamgregory.com. God bless. Lock on to that docking station of the love revolution. Thanks for listening. God bless. Bye for now.